<laughs> Before we get into the word, let's open up your prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in here, Father. We thank you for your word, Lord. Father God, we, I surrender my all, Father, that you use me and speak through me, Father, to touch each and every person's heart here in this building, Father, that we will become more and more like your son, Jesus Christ, yes. Father, and we will walk in total victory. Yes. In Jesus' Holy. name, amen. 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 So I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking about breaking down Jericho's. So we all, we all kind of heard, of, heard the story, right? Let's go to Joshua 6. So it says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See right here's key words. The Lord spoke to Joshua. Here they are. They just passed through the uh, Jordan River. And here they are. And they come to this walls. This city with these walls. And just a little history on these walls. You're talking, there's a retaining wall. And it was about 12 to 16 feet, it says. And then on top of the retaining wall, there was a brick wall. And that one was 20 feet, 20 to 24 feet or something like that. So we're talking a big 30 something foot wall. And then behind that wall, there's another wall that's about 15 feet. And this, this little city, it says that it was about six acres. There was houses stacked in there. So just a, a kind of now, now we can picture what it was. So they came to this place and there's these walls. You ever feel like that? Like you just accomplished something in your life and then something else pops up right there. So here they are. They just got through all of this and they come through these walls. And then it goes on to say, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war, you shall go all around the city once this, you shall do six days. So here they are, all these guys, they're ready for battle. And then they get there, they're all anxious, they're ready to go and take over. And the Lord says to Joshua, he says what to do. He, uh, God gives Joshua the game plan of how they're going to win this battle. See, God's given us game plans. Every battle we face, every wall we face in our life, God gives us a game plan. Amen. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark, but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when you when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout then the wall of the city will fall flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people 
that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced oh, advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you shout then you shall shout see a lot of times God tells us to be quiet sometimes the best thing to do is just be quiet and listen sometimes we talk too much what he's telling his people is hey be quiet when we walk around these walls, I don't want you guys looking at the walls and talking about how tall they are, how thick they are. They're like six, ten feet wide, uh, thick, these walls. He's saying, no, be quiet. Don't say a word. Because what happens is when people start talking negative, other people feed on the negative, and then you got a lot of negative. So when you face a wall in your life, don't worship that wall. And say how great that wall is in your life. But be quiet and listen. God's given us a plan. This is a battle. We got to take our battles to the spiritual realm. See this. This whole battle. All of this took place before the new covenant. See that's where it's, it's totally. It just changes the whole ball game. Is because this happened before Jesus. If it was now, it would be a total different story. We wouldn't be walking around walls, walking around, walking around, uh, what is it, 13 times. I'm going to explain to you guys why. <laughs> God tells us how to deal with a lot of things. Some of us, we face walls when we're driving. And God tells us how we should act. What we should do, but sometimes we don't want to hear it. We rather talk. We rather do actions when we're driving. <clears throat> See, God tells us a lot. See, God told me about moving to Kau. Amen. And this past week was a rough one. I mean, really rough. And there was times along the way last week when the devil came in and said, Oh, maybe you should stay here. And I thought, and it, I, I would let this thought play around in my mind a little bit. And then I'd have to cast it down. And you know how I know what that, I was, that that was the devil? playing around in my mind is because it was by feeling. It was about something that I felt. It wasn't about what was true on where God called me, what God put on my heart a while ago. But it was a feeling that came and really I had to take authority over it. Because if I would have entertained that wall to stay, you know, I kept thinking about Abraham the whole time we were moving. How Abraham was not blessed until he moved. He wasn't blessed, and then he moved. It seemed like his son, when God told him that he would have a son, what he did was he had a kid with somebody else. And that was because of the flesh. He thought fleshly that he couldn't, that they, uh, his wife couldn't have a baby. So Ishmael was the flesh, and Isaac was of the supernatural. And so I kept thinking about this, that if I stayed in Kona, that would be an Ishmael move. I would be acting on the flesh and not on what God has revealed to me. So this walls, this Jericho battle, it happened before 
Jesus' resurrection, before Jesus came to earth and conquered all things, and he died the spiritual death and rose, the only man to ever do that, die and rise again. Nobody else could do that. So if we can look at Hebrews 11.30. So it says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. So, key words, faith. By faith the walls fell down. Remember that lady with the blood disease? What was it that made her well? Her faith. Remember when Peter walked on water? He stepped out in faith. He stepped out of the boat in faith. But what happened? Jesus told him, you of little faith. Key words in our victory is faith. So these walls fell down by faith. They did what God said. This is before they had the name of Jesus. Remember that. That these guys couldn't knock down those walls, just go to them and, and in the name of Jesus, and these walls dropped flat. See, these walls fell flat. They didn't just like kind of shake. Scientists have been digging there for years. <coughs> And they discover all kind of stuff. It's a cool little history lesson I took this past week on, these, on this area. <coughs> that the walls actually came crumbling down and they fell so the men could walk straight up. It wasn't just like a piece of the wall fell down and they all entered through there. It all fell flat so they could walk into the city. And they say that an earthquake was what caused it. See, when we start to listen to God, the ground starts to shake. Things start to change. Remember like Paul and Silas, when they were locked up in jail, while they were worshiping, the ground began to shake and open doors. The ground is starting to shake here in Kau. Amen. People are changing. Ways are changed. Strongholds are being broken. Amen. Walls are starting to fall down in, yes. all, in, in certain people's lives. See, in John 10.10, 10, uh, Jesus changed the way we operate. He changed the whole, the rules of the game right there. Before you had to go and you had to circle these walls. But now when Jesus came, he, it says that he came and gave us life, that we may have life and life more abundant. Now it's changing. Those walls would have came down because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. But they didn't know. They don't have what we have now. Joshua and his people did not have what we have now. We're living in such an awesome time because we have the name of Jesus. Amen. The name that conquers everything. There's nothing above the name of Jesus. And when we get that into our heads and really understand what the name of Jesus really means and what he has done for us, walls will come down yes. at the name of Jesus. Mark eleven twenty. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw a fig tree dried up from the roots.
And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. There we go again. Faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Amen. So what we got to do is speak to those mountains, to those walls. We got to use our mouths. We got to use the name of Jesus. Right here, it says, this is Jesus talking to you. He's saying, Stanley. Yes. My son. Yes. My daddy. <laughs> He's saying, whatever you shall say unto this mountain. He's telling you directly. Whoever you are, he's telling you directly. He's saying, here, just say unto that mountain, be removed. Yes. Say to that wall, drop flat. I don't want to just drop the wall, break the wall in a couple places, but the wall be flat. Yes. So you can walk straight through. That's God's plan for us from the very beginning. But it was lost. And it was regained. Amen. God's given us all authority from the very beginning. He was given, he gave man all power and authority, all dominion over everything. But it was lost and then it was regained. So remember that. Get into the word, study it, find out who you really are. So let's look back at Joshua 6. Let's look at the, um, the 11th verse. Or, you know, I'll just explain. I'll just go with it. Um, so what he, so what happened was God told them exactly what to do to walk around it seven times or one time every day for six days. And then on the seventh day, walk around the wall seven times and then shout. So they did that. And verse 17 says, Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, and she and all who are with her in the house, because she did the messengers that we sent. So, there's one lady in that whole city. They said that the, the place was like 3,000 people. That was like the population. So, what happened was Joshua sent some spies and she let them in. And she took care of them and she hid them from the king. Because they didn't want anybody else coming in and they... So what she did was, it says also by faith in Hebrews that she lived, that she took them in because she knew what was to come. And so, verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets and all, all it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. See, we've been walking around walls way too long in our lives. We still sometimes operate under like the old covenant. We're trying to walk around walls, walk around walls. But yet Jesus came and changed that so we don't have to walk around these walls time and time again. Yes. He's changed the whole way that they used to operate. These battles that they used to go through, we don't need to go through them the same way because of Jesus. We all have walls in our life. Addiction. 
depression, disease, sickness, hurt, our past. We all have walls that we face all the time. Poverty, it's a wall. Lack, it's a wall. And see, God has given us Jesus so we can break down those walls without walking through them, walking around. It's time to stop walking around these walls every day. We break them down a little bit and then we walk around them again. We cast them out in the name of Jesus and then we start walking around them again because of our. we need to renew our mind. There's things in our lives that we keep walking around. Addiction. We keep walking around it, walking around it, entertaining it. We break free from it and then we entertain it. We walk around that wall again. When God spoke to Joshua, he had a plan. And he's got a plan for each and every one of us. He's got a plan for us to be like his son Jesus. He's got a plan to change our lives for the better. Sometimes those walls, we keep holding on to them. But what the Lord says, it's time to stop walking around those walls and start shouting. Now we walked around them way too long. That we keep going back to them. In Hebrews it says that by faith the worlds were framed by the word of God. We have the ability to change our everyday lives, our whatever we do, the situations that come up, how we react, the things we do, the people around us. We can change that by faith. So God's been speaking to me this whole week. I, I wasn't planning on doing this. I don't, it just, he started moving with me with these, these walls of Jericho. I'm thinking, God, oh, that's like, like back in the day, why, why are you going to have me teach on that? And then I realized it's because some of us keep fighting battles that same way. Waiting for God to move. They had to wait for God to move instead of now God says go and do it and it'll be done. So it's totally different and I'm, I'm wondering why? why? Why do you want me to teach on this? Because things change. Time has changed and, and the way we operate is not the same as how they used to. We're not under that old covenant. We're under a new covenant. Jesus is the new covenant. He's our mediator between us and God. So when we want things done, when you want things done at your job or something, you go to the boss. You don't wait for the boss to just hopefully he will see you. No, we have that boss. He will go and he will change it because of what Jesus did. So if we could all stand up right now. Let's all think about, let everybody just close your eyes and just think about those walls in your life. Yes. Those walls that have been holding you back, holding your spouse back, whatever it is. Those walls that, that are holding this community back. 
holding us back from reaching our next destination, our next things in life to come that God has promised us. These walls stood in front of Joshua and his people and they circled them and circled them. But see, God right now is saying, stop circling them, Kavika. Stop circling them, Pastor Bob. Stop circling them, Pastor Stanley. It's time to shout. Woo. Start shouting, church, because God Thank you, Lord. Thank has a plan for us that it's not to be circled around. We are ready. God's ready to move. Start shaking grounds. Start shouting. This is a time. We've walked around the walls way too many times already. Start shouting, guys. Those walls. Disease be gone in the name of Jesus. That's the kind of authority we have now. We don't need to circle those that walls anymore. We don't have to worry about keep going to those walls and looking up at them with that healing that is yours because of what Jesus has done for you in your life. Because of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. What is it that you need? What are those walls? Cast those walls down in the name of Jesus. This is a time for you to break those walls down that have been holding you back. Depression. Suicide here in these islands, in this state, in this country. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Satan, we remove you out of here. In Jesus' name, you get your hands off of these children that are you trying to influence. In Jesus' name. See, God has given us all power and authority to cast out anything. Start to operate in it. Start to use it. Don't just let it sit there on the shelf. Let loose, church. It's time to start shouting. You know when those people, they, they finally, they circled those walls and, and they just started shouting and saying, Hallelujah! And walls started crumbling down flat. Hallelujah! Shame. Some people are ashamed of things. Ashamed of the word of God. But God is saying, shout, shout. If you're ashamed, shout. Those walls will be broken down. See, we're not just an average, ordinary church, but we are a church that's going to change this community. We are a church, a body that is going to go out and preach the gospel. Sickness, you guys got to speak to that sickness, the depression, the disease, whatever it is, the hurt. That healing is yours. Those walls, they're coming down. Let's just pray in our heavenly language. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See those walls. Those walls are not meant to be walked around anymore. Because we live under a new covenant. A new way of operating. Because in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know where this is going. I don't know where it's going, but you know what? It's going somewhere. There's something that needs to be done. And here we are. Oh, worship you. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just praise you, Father. Father, we worship you, Father, for the walls, Father, that are crumbling as we shout unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us are stuck in our old ways. 
Some of us are, are worried about what somebody else thinks about us, what or the person next to us thinks about us. But don't worry, God says. He asks, who shall I send? Send me, Lord. Here I am. When we walk out of these doors and we face the world, we will speak with authority. We will believe by faith that these walls are crumbling down. We will say unto these mountains, be removed. We're not going to walk over these mountains, but we are going to remove them out of our lives. Hold up. See, God's working in some people right now. He's putting some things in your heart. He's revealing things to you. He's showing you things. things that are corrupting you so you live a miserable life. He wants to take it away so he can bless you with something yes. more yes. than that. Receive it, Lord. Receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. We surrender. 